Guys, this is now the part where I as start assembling all the shocks together and then add it onto the XR10 chassis. So what I'm basically going to do is going to do a how-to video on building the shock components all together and you guys can see all the other XR10 series. So I've gone ahead and laid out all the parts I need to build the shock. So you guys can just follow along. So first off, you need part AX0, I mean AX80035, part number one. Then you need the rubber O-ring. Just slide it over. And then you have a gasket the o-ring gasket around so now you have these smaller washer uh, o-rings what you want to do is actually get grease and that way you don't run the risk of tearing the actual o-rings this makes the transition from the uh, shock well it actually makes it a lot easier for your build process and you run the risk less risk of running into damaging your o-rings because that's the last thing you want to happen to you so now what you're going to want to do is get your aluminum bodied axial shock body and thread it into now get the shock piston and to build this, what you basically want to do is get four of uh, the 2.7 by 6.7 by 0.5 millimeter washers, metal washers, and then put on the uh, shock. Uh, I'm not really sure what it's called, but. It's the part in the shock that actually has the holes, the plastic. And then you have the M2.5 nylon locking nut. So what Axel has gone ahead and done is actually put grooves on the ends of the shock piston. So you can put your pliers there without having to worry about damaging the actual shock piston. I'm just going to tighten that lock nut. So now you have to install the actual piston into the shock body so what I like to do I like to actually add a little grease onto the shock piston end and just gently put it in it's good so your next step is just basically putting AX30133 onto the actual piston just like so and then uh, you want to get AX80034 part 9 and AX1331. So an easy way to put the ball end and the uh, ball end receiver in is actually putting it together like so. Then getting your needle nose pliers and just gently work it in. So you hear it snap in, then you just tighten it down. So I finally tightened down the actual shock. Now what the manual asks us to do is actually get the shock cap, then the diaphragm. Uh, but before you actually put on the diaphragm, you want to put on the aluminum shock cap, the preload collar just screw it onto the aluminum body is the time to put on well in your 30 weight oil shock oil so they give you a pretty big amount of shock oil in this bottle so what I'm gonna do now is actually pull down the shock piston all the way down and just fill it in so this shock body actually holds a lot of uh, shock oil. So once you fill that up you want to gently just push it up and down 
and try not to overflow it yet and all these little air bubbles will come out so now to put on the actual shock cap you want to put your shock piston about halfway in and then actually start gently uh, screwing on your shock cap and wrap the close of the top of the shock body because most of the shock oil will come out once you've tightened it all the way just make sure to get your tissue and try to wipe off all that excess oil so it doesn't get in any dirt when you're crawling so I've done that now what you want to do to complete it is get the silicone stock bushing and just slip it through the uh, shock hole alright so once you get that on it's pretty easy from there but I'll continue so what you want to do is get the stock spring out attach it to there you want to move the rubber the rubber preload out of the way if it's right around there and then get your shock uh, sleeve I think it's called so now your shock is completed thanks for watching guys see you later